seven. <laughs> seven. Seven signs that you have a normal menstrual cycle. Brought to you by Christine Marie, the period empress. Now, why would I, who focuses on shifting people to pain-free, PMS-free, and regular length cycles, want to do a video about how you can know what normal is for periods? Because the medical profession keeps expanding and broadening its definition for what normal is because more and more people are suffering and they don't want people to feel left out. Oh my gosh, I don't want you to feel left out. So I'm going to say that your suffering is totally normal and totally fine and that the long-term effects of tolerating suffering like this aren't such a big deal. You know, long-term effects like hysterectomy, lowered ability, um, lowered fertility rates, a very high difficulty to get to use fertility treatment because you can't get a, uh, you can't get a regular period because fertility treatments need a regular as in a regular length cycle. And oh, I don't know, higher chance of stroke and cardiac problems when you are in your later time of life, in your twilight years, directly connected to tolerating abominable, debilitating symptoms of menstrual disorder. All so that you can feel okay about the fact that you are suffering. No, I say no to this. And I can say no to this because I have a way to get you to normal. You know, period empress, pain-free, PMS-free, regular length cycles. So, I offer this not to make you feel bad, but to inspire you to shift and fix your womb. Because as within, so without. When we nurture our periods from menstrual disorder to menstrual order, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Our whole life levels up. I'm living proof, my clients are living proof. Oh, this is the good stuff. Before we go any farther into the seven ways that you can know that your cycle is normal, please like and subscribe. It's really helpful for me. It helps people know, it helps people get like the good, the good, good, that they, number one, if they're suffering, there's nothing wrong with them and they can switch. And number two, if they're not suffering, they can up-level their lives by living an easeful impact and not efforting all the time and diminishing their resources for no good reason. I, I defy you to give me a career challenge that can't be accomplished through easeful impact by us leaning into our innate givens as people born with a uterus. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Put it in the comments. Mm, I love a good challenge. So, liked and subscribed. Have you done that? Have you clicked the like button? Have you clicked the subscribe? Have you clicked the, the little bell? Okay, if you've done that, thank you so much. And if you haven't, I hope by the end of this, you are inspired to do that, to spread this good, good news. So. The first, I have a list, so let me pull it up. I prepared. Um, the first sign that your menstrual cycle is normal is that you are not experiencing any unusual odors, including fish. Now, I tend to inhale sushi on my day one and my day 28. Like, I just, I crave it, and yet, Nothing smells fishy um, because it doesn't work that directly. You know, the food gets um, processed in our bodies and the, the smell, you know, doesn't go with it. Although garlic is one of those, um, one of those foods where if you, it doesn't matter how you take it, how it's processed. If you've had garlic in your body, everyone will know. It will come out of all of you. <laughs> so um, that is true for garlic, but no unusual odors is a sign that everything's okay. If you have unusual odors, then you probably have some sort of imbalance. And the way to figure out which imbalance you have is to orient your life to living according to your menstrual phases. And when we do that, our body will actually start to crave certain foods in specific phases. And when we give our body those foods, they will help balance out any imbalances and smell is a way that we can know that something's out of balance. Um, so easier said than done, I guess, is what you might say because you're like, wait, uh, wait, hold on a second, you know, uh, record scratch. Uh, what are you talking about? Live according to your menstrual phase. Well, we have four menstrual phases and each phase is a physiological way of being that is distinct from the other three phases. Our people who are born without a uterus, they do not have this. They do not have um, four different ways of being over a 28-day time. 
They have four different ways of being over a 24 hour period. And they recognize that as differing energy levels. It'll be like high energy, high, like middle level energy, energy that's going up and down, like a bouncing ball, and then low energy. That's what they experience in 24 hours. That's what we experience in 28 days, which is why getting our advice on how our body is okay from a system that was created to accommodate an entirely different medical system, I mean, excuse me, biological being called the, our friends who were born without a uterus, can be very weird for our bodies because we're not actually getting advice that is tuned in to us. Now, here's the good news about medical research for women. Um, more and more of it is happening, but if you are waiting for them to find a solution to shift to pain-free, PMS-free, and regular lane cycles to get you there in this lifetime. Um, sorry. But there is a way that's not medical and doesn't require um, supplements or medications or a special diet or special exercise or hormone therapy or functional therapy or gut therapy. No manipulation of your biological chemistry. Um, but it does require that you treat the causes instead of all the things that I just said that only treat the symptoms. To learn more about it, we have a white paper that's the science behind our awesomeness and why we can do the stuff that we promise to do without using, without hurting ourselves, <laughs> without suffering to heal. Yeah, it's possible. The science behind it is in our white paper. And if you want to get our white paper bundle, as well as you get to join our email list and get amazing tips, we cover, um, we look at breath work, we look at rest, we look at amplifying our superpower of being in our weekly emails, all of that, click on the link in the description. Um, so you'll also get more and more of this information about how to live in these four menstrual phases. So a weird odor or really too much of any odor besides the smell of period. This is a segue. This is like a tangent. Since I was like, I want to say 22, I can actually smell when somebody's on their period. It smells like period. It's not an odor. It's not like an onerous odor. It's not a specific kind of odor. It just smells like itself. It smells like period. I can also smell when somebody is sick. Like I can smell the smell of sick. Um, so I'm just offering that because that doesn't count as one of the odors that we're talking about. That shows that you, um, that is one of the seven ways to know that your um, menstrual cycle is normal. Another way to know, the second way to know that your menstrual cycle is normal is that your length of your menstrual shedding lasts two to seven days. Two to seven days. Not less than two, not more than seven. And you want the flow itself to be light to, to mild. So if you are like me, how I used to be, two super plus tampons at a time, and even that was like, oh my gosh, I hope that's enough. I hope that'll get me through these next two hours. Um, then that is not a normal period. You know, in our dream world, super plus tampons are uncommon. They are like not, norm not high sellers in the pharmacy because our, all of us born with a uterus have switched to regular cycles, which includes a regular normal flow. Okay, so... If you, if your flow is shorter than two days or longer than seven days, that means that you have menstrual disorder and you might benefit hugely from getting to pain-free, PMS-free and normal lane cycles because one of the other effects of that is that your flow comes down to a light to normal flow or increases to a normal flow if you're only shedding for one day. The third way to know that your menstrual cycle is normal is that you are not shedding too many clots of blood. Some of us do shed blood clots. That is normal. But if you are shedding three or more, then you're losing a bit too much. Because remember, menstrual shedding is the discharge of that which your body no longer needs. Blood is nutritious. That's why I don't refer to the time of menstrual shedding, the menstrual phase, as bleeding. Because you're not bleeding. And when we say, oh, when you're bleeding or I'm bleeding, we are suggesting, number one, pain, number two, suffering, and number three, that we are losing nutritious 
materials that our body needs to function. We're not. So please don't call it that because the time of menstrual shedding is a glorious, beautiful time that should not include pain and doesn't have to include pain. That's avoidable. My work proves that. So it's menstrual shedding. And if you are shedding two, or, excuse me, three or more blood clots, that means that you're losing life-giving nutrition. That means that there is an imbalance, there is a disorder, and we want to bring your body to order, okay? So now let's look at the fourth way to know that your menstrual cycle is normal. No pain or minimal cramping. Let that sink in. It is not normal to have cramps. If you're cramping, it is a minimal amount we're talking not pain medication worthy, like a passing, oh, oh, I just got my period, like that. Our bodies are not made to be in pain. But when we misuse our body consciously, or in most of our cases, in, most, in the case of most people watching this video, unconsciously, that is when our body sounds the alarm. And because our womb is in the center of our body, it is meant to be the center of attention. It is meant to be the first defense. If you ignore it, then you get those ancillary pains and problems, thyroid problems, consistent, you know, long-term migraine problems. And then you get, on top of that, you get the fibromyalgia. It just keeps compounding because you're not listening. So listen, you're not supposed to be cramping. It's not normal. Even though everybody says it's normal, well, 84.1% of people who menstruate are experiencing menstrual disorder. So it's, so it's considered normal because a super majority of us experience it. No, we have, to bring, we have to bring that number down because that's not how we're supposed to be living. The more of us who live that way, the faster we die, the less impact we give in our lives, the more aborted missions because we come to this planet with a mission. If we cannot fulfill it, we gotta come around again because the world needs us to operate from our place of strength so that our mission can be accomplished, not aborted. Accept the fact that it's not okay to have cramps. And, make, and if I anger you, do something about it. What can you do about it? I'm gonna go to the doctor and go on birth control just to prove that that um, that I'm that there's no way that I can be out of pain because that's what the doctor said is gonna solve my birth control. And once I get on, I mean, it's gonna solve my cramps. And once I get on birth control and I'm still cramping because that's what happens when I'm on birth control, you're gonna see that pain is not avoidable for all of us. Nah, nah. I did that. I went on birth control. It did not stop my cramps. In fact, it kept me regular, but I was PMSing all over the place and I had really awful cramps. It didn't fix anything except it kept my period regular and even that it eventually stopped working at doing. Prove me wrong by treating the causes and nurturing your body into menstrual order and then still having cramps. Please, ah, oh, I'd love to be proven wrong. And a sustained shift. I, I would love that. Gosh, I'm so belligerent. I am not even in soldier phase, guys. I'm in peacemaker phase. <laughs> Look at this, this is coming out of me. Ooh, ooh. okay. We have two more. Um, there is no spotting in between periods, okay? So, sign that your menstrual cycle is normal and no spotting in between periods. I have seen many people, <laughs> many influencers, it's okay to have spotting between your periods. It's not. There's something wrong. That's your body trying to tell you that there's something wrong. And if you have spotting between your periods and you're pregnant, then you're not gonna get another period, so it's not between periods. Spotting is a sign that something's wrong. All of our menstrual imbalances and menstrual disorders can be solved when we treat the cause instead of treating the symptoms. Don't let this be okay just because medicine says it's okay. They have a lot of people to be, they, they need to be right for the whole world, doctors. That's a lot of pressure to put on human beings to be right 
And so in order for them to be right, they broaden and expand the definitions of what normal and okay is to accommodate everybody's imbalances, to normalize them because they don't have a way to solve them. There is a way to solve them. So just solve them. Spotting between periods is a sign that something is wrong. Accept that it's a sign and let it motivate you into action. That's the reason your womb is sending it. Okay, our last, number seven. Oh, excuse me, you guys, I apologize. I skipped over one. I actually embedded it in another one. So if your flow, a, a heavy flow, is a sign of an, of a, excuse me, a flow that is light to mild is a sign of a normal menstrual cycle. A heavy flow is a sign that your menstrual cycle is not normal. And if you tell me, in my family, we all have heavy cycles, that is just proof that your family, all of the women in your family are operating in a way that keeps them out of menstrual order. And so if they stop living their lives with certain beliefs or ways of being that contribute to suffering, which is nurtured and manifests as menstrual disorder, when they stop doing that, their flow will also shift from heavy to normal. I speak only from results. This is not theoretical, and this is a pragmatically developed process. I am so grateful that I don't have to be in pain anymore, and that's why I'm on fire, that everybody I know and don't know <laughs> gets out of pain, gets out of suffering, and gets into, into showing up in their majesty, in their easeful impact, because that is our birthright. The people born without a uterus, they're the ones who have to effort, and they actually get energy from it. We were easeful impact. We don't have to effort. That's, a, that's what they told us we have to do, because that's what they have to do. Number seven. The seventh way, that you, the seventh sign that your menstrual cycle is normal is that your length of your cycle is normal. Now, medically, 21 to 35 days is a normal cycle. Okay. Um, in our work at Study Plus Free, when people shift to pain-free and PMS-free cycles, interestingly enough, the length of their cycle is 27 to 28 days or 28 to 29 days. But that sweet spot at 28 doesn't move. Case after case after case, success after success after success. That number doesn't change. They are not suffering in any way. I've had somebody come to me and say, oh, well, I don't have any, I don't have any period problems and my cycle is 21 days long. And then once they're in the collective, they're like, oh, I didn't realize that headaches and menstrual migraines are considered menstrual imbalance. They didn't even know what a menstrual migraine was. They just thought it was interesting that they happened to have migraines when they were menstruating. It's a, that's, that's a suffering, that's a menstrual disorder. They also later on explained to me that, oh yeah, they have really bad PMS and they actually have really awful cramps, but it's only for a few hours, so that doesn't count. Pain is pain is pain, suffering is suffering is suffering, a rose is a rose is a rose, guys. When they shifted to pain-free, PMS-free cycles, their cycle length was up. It became 28 days. It got, they got to 28 days. It didn't even take that long. It took them 60 days, the case I'm talking about right now. Um, so yeah, there is a normal length of a cycle. And you can go to any doctor and every single doctor will say, that woman, the period empress is crazy because it's 21 to 35 days, that's what normal is. But remember, they have a different duty. They have a different commitment and obligation to you than I have. I have a duty to make sure that your body is working in its best way for you to live the easeful, impactful life that is yours, for you to be intolerant of any disorder in your body, of any disorder in your womb, because it could affect and compound in more problems for your body. And I am so committed to shifting the resources that we're spending in terms of time and money and suffering on our cramps and on our menstrual disorders to things that cannot be solved by just living in your, living a life that serves you. There are bigger problems this shouldn't be as big of a problem as it is. 
And the more of us that shift to pain-free PMS-free regular lane cycles, the, the better chance that resources can be allocated to the real problems. This is solvable, let's solve it. Oh my gosh, I, wow, I really went for it today. 24 minutes, Jesus. Um, this will be, the video will be sped up, so it won't be 24 minutes long, but I do hope you hung in there. Please offer your comments, offer your feedback, let me know. I'm wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace, and a normal period. And now you know what that is.